Gathering Place podcast, sharing about the Gorian philosophy, the Gorian ethos, and the Gorian lifestyle. Now, here is your host, Rocker. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining another episode here on the Gorian Gathering Place podcast. Today, what I want to talk about a little bit is the nonsense and the things that have been happening on Fet Life and on other places among online Gorians for the last, oh, three to six months. As many are aware that uh, the online Gorian community has gotten very quiet over the last few weeks, and there's several reasons for that. Uh, one of the key reasons is the fact that you have had Gorians that for years have had this false personification about who they are, what they're about, and they don't like to be challenged when, they're, when they continually make up things or continually want to one-up everyone else is that it raised a lot of eyebrows and so I've taken it upon myself and several others have as well to be able to challenge these people about you say this is what you are you say these are the relationships you are in you say this is uh, about what you uh, the amount of experience that you've had prove it to me and I've done that numerous times over the last few months and it's upset a lot of people but also a lot of people have disappeared uh, they don't like to be challenged. They don't like the light being shone in the dark corners of their fake quote-unquote life. Um, one of the, the, the big people is that we had someone that, that carried on for years and the online Goring community was duped and fooled that this guy was an actual leader. Is uh, He went on for years about the fact that he was responsible for the whole renaissance of the Gorian community. Uh, that he was one of the key people that established the Gorian philosophy, uh, uh, the Gorian ethos, uh, the lifestyle. And that he was someone that needed to be revered because he had years and years and years of experience online and offline. Uh, I ended up calling him out on that for, for several reasons. Number one is the fact that that he finally admitted in the last couple of months the fact that he's only actually met Gorians for about five or six years and then he stopped meeting them. So even though he says that he's been in a you know Gorian since 1990 or 1980 sorry, he actually didn't meet any actual Gorians till almost the end of the century, almost 20 years later was when he finally started actually meeting Gorians in a group called Silk and Steel. And the group of, uh, Silk and Steel group actually uh, had several gatherings that they met over three, four years and then it basically ended up imploding because of egos, uh, a lot of infighting, there was theft of money, there was some sexual assaults that took place. It just became a huge fiasco and ended up basically blowing up um, overnight. And so this individual was uh, that became one of the leaders or the visible leader of this group. And uh, the other thing with it as well is that the fact that he would always go on, the fact that he had an FC for 30 some odd years and he had a slave for 20 some odd years. But uh, the thing with that is that his numbers kept changing all the time. One time he would say he had the FC for 30 years, and he had a slave for 21 years, and then a couple of months later he would post and say, oh, I have an FC for 34 years, and I've had a, an FC for 28 years, and the numbers kept changing all the time. And I noticed this, and I challenged him on it, and he got quite upset. He got very aggressive as far as attacking me. Um, and he ended up actually taking one of the groups that I had, uh, the Gorian Location Services, and ended up basically going to the person that actually ran that, which is a group hoarder person, and basically begging, hey, I want this group over here, I'm going to prove Rocker a lesson, and da 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 So he ended up, you know, doing a silly thing as far as taking that group, throwing it over in his, and it's become dead ever since, um, you know, which is unfortunate. Because that was a vehicle that could have been used as far as allowing Gorings to be able to meet offline. But the fact that he now has it over in his group, which doesn't have the numbers, doesn't have the traffic, is it's basically died out. Um, you know, Malkinius has done the same thing. He's ended up taking over several groups, and as soon as he takes them over, they become dead in the water. Is people don't aren't, aren't active, they're not involved, 
yeah, which is unfortunate because some of those groups were very, they could have been very positive groups if managed properly and if promoted properly. So, so anyhow, you had Bear of Air that's going on about the fact that he was responsible for the renaissance of, of, of online gore, that he had these two girls for years and years and years. And when he got challenged on it, is uh, all of a sudden he does this whole, oh, everyone feels sorry for me, is, you know, the reasons why why I don't meet other Gorians is because I have health issues, and da-da-da-da-da. And, okay, well, taking into account the fact that, okay, that might be true, again, I'm not sure, because he's lied about so many things. But even if you go with the, the, with the premise, the fact that, okay, he does have health health issues, it's been almost 30 some odd years that he had opportunities to meet Gorians and he hasn't. Now that he's moved to Chicago, he says, well, since 2011, I haven't not met any Gorians uh, because, you know, I'm embarrassed and, and I'm partially crippled and I have issues with my eyesight and da, 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 da. Okay, what about all the years previously? You know, what about all the Gorians that go out of their way that have similar health issues, and they basically have the attitude, I don't give a fuck what you think about me. I want to meet with like-minded people. I've met Gorians that are battling with cancer. I've met Gorians that are battling with leukemia. I've met Gorians that have, uh, that have MS. And it doesn't matter. You accept them for who they are. You accept them with all their perfections and imperfections because you're able to get together, sit down, break bread, and share about what is in your heart. The love and the communion that you have around gore. That's all that matters. As far as whether you are, are sick or whether you, uh, you know, whether you are, are older and all of us get older and we all are start to have issues, it doesn't really matter on the outside. If you are so shallow to think that people aren't going to accept you because, um, you know, you're getting older and you, you have to walk with a cane or because you put on some weight or because you've got gray hair or because maybe you have all these different illnesses, you know, you really don't understand what gore is all about. You really don't understand the sense of what community is all about, that when people are sick, that's when others of like mind, i.e. Gorians, that's when they come to their aid. They come to help them. They personify and live, actually, what a community is supposed to be. To be for those that are weaker. To be for those that are struggling. They have to come alongside to support and encourage and enable and to lift up and to get them back on track wherever they need to be. That is what the Gorian community is all about. So anyhow, that's enough about Bear Bear. Yeah. Another person that's completely disappeared, in fact, he quote-unquote, she quote-unquote, died again, is Callie. You know, Callie came back in the form of, of a, a fake account called Southpaw something or other. And was around for about a year, stirring up a lot of things, was trying to have a fights with Bray and myself and Dragon and, and this whole fiasco, trying to organize, oh, I'm in Arkansas, but you know, hey, Bray, pray if you're going to be around next weekend, or Dragon, if you're going to be around next weekend, I'll come up to New York and da 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 da. And it, it was just a lot of nonsense, you know, a lot of chest pounding and chest thumping and, and, and no real substance to anything. And uh, then she came into the Goring Gathering Place and started trying to stir things up. The fact, she wanted to be a leader and was trying to, to go out of her way like she always has as far as correcting everyone else. Well, Rocker, you should be doing this. Or Dragon, you should be doing this. Or Prey, you should be doing this. Or so-and-so, you should be doing this. Meanwhile, they weren't doing any of these things themselves. But they are trying to, to judge and exert authority over everyone else. When I called her out on it, you know, she finally acknowledged in the Goring Gathering Place that, yeah, she was Callie. And this is what Callie does. Callie's to go around in, in several of the Goring groups, chastising the free men, mocking them, belittling them, and trying to get them to do what she thought in her own mind and what Gore was about. And a lot of the guys would not, sti uh, would not stick up to her. 
or stand up to her because they were afraid of being, uh, you know, mocked and becoming her target. Me, I never gave a shit about that stuff because, hey, this is my life. This is what I choose to do. This is what I believe in. And fuck everybody else. So she came into the Gordon Gathering place with this, you know, basically coming after me. And I basically challenged her on it. And she finally acknowledged, yes, that she was Callie. That the picture that she had of a, of a bald guy in his late 30s, early 40s, was actually a neighbor of hers that was over having some beers. And she said, hey, can I take a picture of you? You're real cute, da, da, da. And ended up using someone else's picture, put that on her profile, and set herself up as being this guy that was this and that and everything else. Uh, now, if you remember for those of, uh, that were around a year ago, she went on the fact that, you know, she was involved in a, a bus accident in Arkansas. And, you know, it was very tragic and she was in the hospital and that got her to, to be involved as far as in nursing and this and that and everything else. Uh, you know, there was no bus accident that happened. If there was a school bus accident or whatever, there would be media coverage on that. That never happened. And I called her out on that and she disappeared for about a year. And then she just came back recently, about two, three months ago, and started up all over again. Right off the bat, she was going after Dragon and Prey, trying to one-up them and, and, and goad them and tried to get them involved and in, into interaction with her so that she could prove how much more Gorian she was than they were. And they never really took it, hook, line, and sinker. You know, they... they interacted a little bit but they stepped away and realized okay Callie you haven't changed at all then she went into the Gorian round table and started going after some of the others challenging Bear going after uh, Nair as far as Nair you should be doing this and you need to start doing this and you need to stop doing that meanwhile she was continually doing all these things herself and she contacted me privately because I had still had her banned from the Gorian Gathering Place. But she contacted me privately, basically, you know, uh, going after me about the fact that I should let her in or under quote unquote Southpaw. And they were going to do all these teaching and do all these wonderful things and, and help the group get some traffic and this and everything else. And I said, No, Callie, you lied to me. You haven't changed. You're not welcome in the group. I don't need the drama, period. I don't need the drama. So, stayed in the, the round table, was involved with uh, the Gorian Reality Group, and all of a sudden she had these two girls out of nowhere. She has these two girls that are that are slaves, and she contacts me again, says, "Hey, can my slaves join your group and this and that?" And, and they have a lot of things that they want to be able to share, and a lot of questions and. And I never answered her on it because I knew these were other fake accounts that she had set up to try to get into the Gorian Gathering Place. And uh, so I never answered her on it. And she contacted me again. And finally I said, Callie, look, I know this is you. You know, you're not fooling me at all. Stop contacting me. You haven't changed. Stay in the other groups if you want. I don't give a shit. They're not my groups. I can't see that stuff. I could care less what happens in those groups. But you're not welcome in the Goring Gathering Place. So she went back there and she got into some fights with Nair a little bit about the fact that, you know, Nair needs to change and needs to calm things down as far as attacking me, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, all of the groups that South Paul is in, as far as Gorian groups, they're all dropped. She dropped every single one of them. And within a week, she got very erratic. And all of a sudden, she ended up faking her death. Now, before she faked her death, she made up another account of another girl that comes on. And, and basically ends up posting in the Gorian Gathering Place. And also posted in another group, either Reality of Gore or... Uh, uh, the round table about Gorian funerals, trying to draw attention to the fact that Southpaw, quote unquote, Callie, supposedly died in a motorcycle accident. Again, all nonsense. You know, this is all Callie's doing, and guaranteed, you could, I'll put money down on this. Within a year, she will come back in form of another profile 
false profile under another false name to carry on where she left off. Her MO has never changed, but the fact that she has duped and lied many people over the years is just, it's unfortunate. So, another stupidity within online gore. So, anyhow, uh, you know, Bear Bear is pretty well gone quiet. Uh, you had Southpaw, i.e. Cali, has basically gone quiet, died again. And then you had Nair. Now, Nair is a special case. About three months ago, I basically had, had enough of her. And I, I basically did a post and did a video, you know, this is real. Enough is enough. And then challenging her on numerous things. Um, and then, you know, within the last month and a half, all of a sudden, she just quit FetLife altogether. And people don't understand why did she quit. It wasn't the fact that she was frustrated. You know, she was setting herself up as being a quote-unquote leader. She had said numerous times that she is the last Gorian free woman that's around and that everybody else was trying to be like her and that she's more important and more special than anybody else and that all the men should be coming after her because she is the entire package. And, but she's not a slave. She was just a mouthy, insensitive, insecure over-emotional, unstable woman that had been used using for years as far as the status of being a free woman online to be able to go after men. She'd gone after Jorvik numerous times, Dragon, Prey, myself, uh, Jared, numerous people over the years. She felt that she had a, uh, a right to to be able to attack them and to be able to go after them if they didn't set up and go along and believe with what she thought Gore was about. And with me, she'd gone after, it was almost on a daily basis. Every time that she would log in the Fat Life, she was taking shots at me. Finally, I'd had enough was enough, and I called her on it. Now, what people don't understand is the reasons why she left Fat Life is that if anyone knows her name, and I'm not going to say her name, and they end up Googling as far as tax evasion and where she lived at the time and her name, you will find some interesting things start to come up uh, as far as different newspaper articles and, and things like that. Is that I had known about these things because a lot of the things that she said didn't, uh, didn't add up. She said she had a foundation, uh, that, that was named after her, she said she had all this money, she said she had this and that and everything else, that she had all this experience, and, and that she was always going on about Gorians need to meet, and yet she would never meet any Gorians herself. And she would always say, well, the reason why I don't meet any Gorians is for my safety. Okay, well, I'm sorry, but if that is your excuse for not meeting any Gorians, you have a very negative a very negative view of what the Gorian community is all about. Sure, there are some wingnuts within Gore. Sure, there are some uh, some stalkers and, and some very negative people within Gore. But you shun those people. You set those people aside. You vet your events. You vet who is going to be your friends. You know, that's just common things that we should do anyway. You know, you're not going to let total strangers into your home. You are, you are always vetting people. Within the Gorian community, it's the same concept. is that you vet the good from the bad, the better from the worst. And you choose who to invite in and who not to invite in. That's your right. But with her, she, she would always use the excuses that everybody is, is bad within Gore and that she could not meet anybody because they're all, you know, they're all after her money or after her body or whatever. And uh, I'm sorry, but never saw a picture of her. But her temperament alone and her instability and being over emotional is enough to turn any guy off. And she was basically a whack job. So basically, Nair. She's gone. Poof. Disappeared from FetLife altogether. And, uh, you know, left all the groups and, and, and the, the ones she was leaders in. Just before she left, she handed some of those off to other people. But she just went poof altogether. And I'm sure she'll stay because she was being stalked or, or this and that and everything else. Which is all nonsense. 
because people really couldn't give two shits about her outside the fact that when she would say things online, she did not like to be challenged on them. She hated being challenged on them. And she would just go off in this major meltdown tangent uh, from time to time, which was, uh, unfortunately, those are all gone now because when you leave FetLife, when you, do, when you quit your account, everything that you've written disappears as well. And there are some really doozies out there of some of the meltdowns that she had that unfortunately are now gone. So, anyhow, online gore has become quite quiet. Uh, you had the major uh, people that have been involved as far as Bear of Air has gone fairly quiet. Nair is no longer around. Southpaw is no longer around because she died. <laughs> uh, uh, you have Malkinius, which is basically that he's uh, gone on in, in a more of the consensual slavery BDSM thing because he realizes that his days within uh, the Gorian community are pretty well not with all the things that have happened with his his past actions and uh, denials and just outright lies that that have been shown. Hey, you're lying on on so many different uh, things to be able to try to set up this self personification. And what's going to happen is that uh, I predict probably within six months or so that if Bear doesn't end up coming back is that uh, Malkinius will try to take over the, the Gorian round table and that will become a dead group just like that. So anyhow, lots of fun within online Gorian groups. A lot of people have been wondering why has it been so quiet? Well, these are the reasons why. It is the main people and the main players that have been involved is that they've all gone to the wayside. And the reasons why is because they've been shown who they actually are. The lies and the false personifications that they've set themselves up have been shown to be lies. That they are false. That they are untrue. And that they have duped and pulled the wool over the eyes of many within the Gorian community, online Gorian community, for years. And remember... These are all people that have never met any other Gorians actually in real life, face to face, one on one. They hide behind a computer screen. They could say whatever they want to say, and no one can really challenge them on it. But I have because over the years there have been so many inconsistencies that it just screamed that, okay, you're making shit up here. The numbers don't add up. You keep changing your relationships as far as, okay, is there, uh, you know, nine years between your FC and your, your slave, and then you say it's only three years, and then you say there's, like, it, it varied so much that these people couldn't keep their stories straight. And that's one of the things, is that when you continually lie and continually try to set yourself up as a leader and someone to be respected and it's all under lies and the foundation is based on lies and deception and just falsehoods sooner or later those things are going to catch up to you and that's what's happened with these people these things have caught up to them and people now realize is that you know they were lied to that this is a guy or a girl hiding behind a computer screen, making whatever they want up, and believe in this fantasy thing, but not actually really live in it themselves. That's unfortunate. But that's part of online gore. So anyhow, that's all I wanted to talk about today. Hopefully you guys have a great long weekend. It's the Thanksgiving long weekend here in Canada, and we will talk to you guys later. Take care.